right. Happy Tuesday, everyone. You all look fantastic. Almost as good as me. That'll never happen. But that's a serious topic tonight. Every Monday, we usually cover the previous weekend's violence. It's another thing we've gotten used to tracking, like inflation or how often Biden loses a fight with gravity. <laughs> but, but now it's like how many's been shot, how many dead. It's like doing a weather report. And in Chicago, it means whether you survived the weekend. Yeah, a little wordplay there. Because <laughs> lately, it's been nothing but storms of violence accompanied by a hail of bullets. As of today, five major U.S. cities are on track to break their already impressive homicide figures. Kudos go out to L.A., D.C., Baltimore, Milwaukee, and Atlanta, where the cost of living rises with your chance of dying. It wasn't easy, but they gave it all they had to surpass last year's numbers. Truly a team effort. The mayors and the thugs pulled together to surpass last year's great season. Meanwhile, California Governor Gavin Newsom blames Republicans since murders happen in red states, ignoring that most homicides occur in cities run by Democrat idiots like himself. It's amazing what hair gel can do to the brain. <laughs> I look at Newsom and I worry about Jesse. <laughs> at least Jesse's hair products come from Fox. Newsom buys his off the street from a guy who robbed a Walgreens. <laughs> the media does its normal job, defining it as gun violence, like guns just show up on their little adorable gun legs. They blame the weapon and not the guy who points and fires, a.k.a. the Alec Baldwin approach. <laughs> For the Dems, they couldn't give a crap either, unless it can help them politically. Then they give more poops than 50 pigeons on a statue. It's the worst combo, people in charge unaffected by their own policies. That means it can continue. You can point out the insane murder rates in liberal cities, but you know what libs tell me? They don't see it. So it really doesn't exist. Well, in that case, who cares? Let's get dinner and drinks tonight. Right, Don? We went out and had a great dinner in New York City tonight. People actually walked up to us and said, thank you for, I watch you every night. I haven't played that one in a while. <laughs> I wonder if they still dine together. It's got to be awkward. But it's true, crime only occurs in certain parts of the city. You know, just like how the bathroom's only part of your home. <laughs> but when the toilet overflows, you'll soon have a problem everywhere. Of course, when Dems can't go to dinner anymore because it's unsafe, they'll just order in and let the delivery man dodge the bullets. No wonder they want open borders. You need people willing to die to get your pad tie. Yeah, huh? Thank you. Very proud of that one. <laughs> Sit and think about it for a while. It's odd, though, this indifference playing out among the people who pretend to care. It's like watching a serial killer nurse poisoning her patients. They spend days rehashing January 6th for political benefit instead of helping their constituents survive. But the suspects on Jan 6th were the right kind of villain, which makes the media's job so much easier. So how did this get so bad? Well, I bet it's the progressive left going in the other direction. The progressive left is going in the other direction. They are effectively enabling the criminals with the, uh, the reforms that they put in place and, in many respects, disarming the police. Unless they get smart and turn it around, uh, they're going to get wiped out in November, certainly. In a couple of years down the line, they'll get wiped out in elective offices at the state and local level because the fear is going to grow as the crime is growing. Mm, so finally, they're talking about crime on MSNBC. Although the only way for them to care is to prey on their political fears rather than focus on the growing mountain of victims who are mostly black. White, wild black men and boys ages 15 to 34 make up just 2% of the nation's population. They were among 37% of gun homicides that year. That's 20 times higher than white males at the same, of the same age group. So what do Dems say about that? Well, you know, it's just gang on gang stuff. It's like mafia violence. As long as you steered clear, you're fine. But what about those in the crossfire? Kids, moms, shopkeepers, people leaving a bar, bouncers, cops, all lives ended by a stray bullet. Remember the old newscaster line? They were just in the wrong place at the wrong time. Well, now the wrong place is a park playground and the wrong time is two in the afternoon on a Wednesday. 
And what about the black males who could have had a different opportunity? What about their families who've lost a son, father, or brother? The progressive DA solution decriminalize gun crime, meaning if you're caught with a gun, we just confiscate it and then we turn you loose. But I guess they want to focus on the real threats. Parents who ask school boards why there's a drag queen twerking on the librarian's desk. <laughs> so we live in two countries, and the left is cool with it. And we can't talk about it, because that's racist. But if we can't talk about it, we can't solve it. So who's stopping us? Well, I'll give you a tiny, tiny hint. <laughs> Let's start with teachers' unions, the wardens of these prisons we call schools. We're sentencing poor blacks to a life of bad education, so it's hard to blame them seeking other options. And it's all brought to you by teachers' unions, who hate school choice, because it's competition. So now we're told reading, math, and history are racist to be replaced with pronoun workshops and grievance studies. You rob kids of the skills they need to succeed, and in a few years, those kids will rob you. At least they'll get a person's pronoun correct during a carjacking. <laughs> That's progress. <laughs> Let's welcome tonight's guest. She's just another slap who won't tolerate liberal crap. Former White House Strategic Communications Director Mercedes Schlapp. <laughs> He's so dapper, his pocket square has a pocket square. <laughs> I'm not kidding this time. That's pure seersucker. <laughs> Host of Making Money on Fox Business, Charles Payne. <laughs> and you may recognize him from carrying Rob Schneider's luggage. <laughs> he wore, yeah, anyway. Actor, writer, and comedian, Jamie Lissau. <laughs> And finally, she's like a shell casing, tiny, brassy, and often found at crime scenes. Fox News contributor, Cap 2. <laughs> Charles, welcome to the show. We're both Thank wearing uh, fuchsia. Is this fuchsia purple ties? Uh, I, you know, when it comes to colors, I'm in the seven crayon box. I grew up with. <laughs> <laughs> they invent new ones all the time. I don't know, you know, so yeah. it's in the purple family. I yes, think. exactly. Yeah. Apparently, we should have called earlier and worked this thing out. <laughs> I feel like there's like, and maybe I'm wrong because I have been wrong in the past, rarely. I feel like there's an implicit agreement between politicians, people in power, and like perpetrators. You keep it to yourself in your neck of the woods, and we'll look the other way. Like in Chicago, as long as you don't, if, if you don't, as long as you stay in this side and you don't come over here, right. we're going to basically let it go. Is that Am I crazy? No, you're not crazy. I ironically, in Chicago, uh, you know, some people say one of the reasons it's even gotten worse is because of gentrification. The, 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 the black neighborhoods have gotten smaller, or the Hispanic neighborhoods have actually shrunk, so the turf wars are more intensified. And again, they look the other way. You know you can get away with certain things. I'm, i got to tell you, growing up in Harlem, I mean, I witnessed murders, mm -hmm. attempted murders, stabbings, um, and you always knew someone would either, A, not go to jail or go to jail for a very short period of time. And this was in the 70s. Yeah. So this has been around for a long time, blaming guns instead of the person. Uh, you know, and I love what you said about the education system because that really is the root of it. From the very beginning, these subpar, watered-down BS educations that essentially are saying, we think you're too dumb. Mm-hmm. And so we're not going to pressure you. You know, you'll read Dick and Jane all the way to sixth grade. And by the time you're in 12th grade and you're about four or five grades behind, we'll make you a Faustian deal. You won't be able to compete in this society. But if you vote for us forever, we'll give you housing projects. We'll give you more food stamps. We'll do this for you and that for you. It's, just, it's, it's nuts. It's worked for the Democrats for decades. Uh, I, think, I think it's starting to fade a little bit with younger generations. I think people are starting to see through this. Older generations, it kind of works, and you know, that's why Clyburn was able to elevate Biden in, because older folks remember when it was really, really tough. Right. Younger people were saying, hey, I, I want to start a crypto mining company. <laughs> so, yeah. you know, so, so it's, it's not working like it did before. Right, right, right. That's a, basically, school is basically a holding pen for kids. <laughs> you know? <laughs> Jamie, Jamie, do they have crime in Alaska? And is it committed <laughs> mostly by bears? It's a lot. We have a lot of bear-on-bear -bear crime. Yeah. And it's, um, 
as long as they keep it in their colony, it's yeah. Okay. Then who cares, right? Yeah, exactly. It's, uh, it is weird how different our laws are, though. Like even common laws, like cell phone driving laws or whatever. Like in Alaska, it's different. We have a law that states if you're if you're talking on your cell phone and you're driving and you see a policeman, you have to put your phone down for a second. <laughs> oh, <really? Yeah. laughs> That's the law. And, that is, uh, yeah, that is the law. Isn't it just so much bad news, though, man? Like yeah. I feel like every time I come back, it's like more and more crime and. And in these big cities, I just want to say, like, so many murders and stuff. I want to say if anybody is, uh, sees that I'm performing mm -hmm. in any of these cities, if you want to come out to my show, I promise an entire hour where there will be no killing. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just let you sit on that one. <laughs> yeah. You're now uh, you're spending more time in New York. Are you worried when you're here? I'm not worried. I, I don't mind. Uh, I don't know. I'm, honestly, it's like... I worry more about, did you notice that, like, you walk down the street mm -hmm. and you can buy, I want to know what's going on with, like, the weed situation here. <laughs> like, it is so crazy. You can just hand out, is that a legal thing or is it that they're doing it and no one's enforcing it? I don't know. I don't know. I don't, I don't even know what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> I have so, no clue. And so we're great. I have cat? no idea. What's uh, weed? We go, we, see, <laughs> generally, we, you know, we go to the church. Yeah, uh, and we put, usually before, and then we help the kids, the orphans. Right. Well, uh, this weed business is not our oh. purview. Well, the, the, going to church is like the time that we for ourselves. Yes, exactly. Because so we're, we're so busy helping the kids. Yeah, helping the kids. <laughs> so I think you know what? If you want to talk about your crazy pot stuff, you take it somewhere else. <laughs> you hippie, you hippie, Mercedes. Yes. If, if you look at how liberal mayors. <laughs> are dealing with crime, you'd think they were on the KKK payroll. Because it's basically, oh, you know, if, if they, they don't care that blacks are killing each other. Like, that, it's just insane. Like, and yeah. that they could just assume it's gang stuff. Yeah, and, and these liberal mayors, I mean, it's all about identity politics for them, but it's the uh, the identity politics of taking down the cops. Yeah. Uh, their goal is to demoralize, demonize these cops. That's why you've seen so many of these police officers leave their, their line of work their, yeah. and really not be able to serve these communities. And I think for the Democrats, I just don't get it because they're going to get crushed in the poll in, in these next elections because the polls are showing that crime and public safety seem to be two of the top issues right now. And I got to tell you, I mean, I hope Jamie's putting on his ticket stub that, you know, killing is not going to be part of his show. <laughs> I think that's going to be a helpful thing. But I think it's usually word of mouth, word of mouth, kills. no killing, <laughs> no killing. Yeah. But uh, the, I think for the Democrats, it's it's definitely a, a big loss for them. But really. Charles talked about education. It's about the family at the end of the day. That is the core. When you have destabilized family structures where the parents are not there for the children or even the grandparents, that in and of itself, and we can't even talk about fatherless anymore because you can't talk about father or mother. Only on Father's Day can you talk about fathers. And, you know, it really, that's the centerpiece of it as well. We can rely on the education system, but it starts at the house to be able to really build up yeah. kids but of strong lost the house, character. If you can't do anything about the house... That's like the first four to five years. If you don't do something before 16, then it's gone. So it's kind of like, if you, at least if we can just get them sooner before they, they're out of high school, that might help. Maybe That's, just getting them out of the womb would be a good place to start. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking of, last time, um, Kat, I want to bring, uh, you're, you've been watching the Supreme Court uh, very closely uh, or since the early 70s. <laughs> so they ruled today that preventing school choice families from taking their kids' uh, taxpayer-funded education dollars to religious private schools violated the free exercise clause of the First Amendment, meaning, I mean, that meaning that they're backing uh, school choice. Yeah, of course it does. Yeah. See, I could be a Supreme Court justice. I've said this. <laughs> like... <laughs> You're really lucky to have me sitting right here when I could be on the bench. <laughs> exactly, exactly. What's your solution? Well, I think that all these people wouldn't really have to try that hard to learn from their mistakes, mm -hmm. which says to me that they must be trying to not learn. Right. Because you just have to pay a little bit of attention to know that this isn't working. Because mm -hmm. they know that it's failing. Yes, it's important to hold police accountable, but you also need to hold criminals accountable, mm -hmm. realize that property crimes are not victimless, and realize that violent criminals are not the types of people who deserve leniency. Right. Uh, but. Um, having to notice that they failed and admit that they failed would have to be the first step to doing something different. And apparently that's more important to them than 
bloodshed on the streets, which I think I have different priorities. Yeah, you, that you do, and it's definitely I'm, not... I'm staunchly anti-bloodshed. Yeah, 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 and it has... <laughs> you have no interest in this thing called weed. Mm -mm, no. <laughs> Jamie, no. why do you bring this poisonous talk? It's we... honestly insulting to me. Yes. <laughs> yes. And my integrity to talk like that in front of a lady such as I. <laughs> you know, I'll tell you what, what made me think of it is like, I don't know if the pandemic hit anybody else. Like, I gained like a little bit of weight during the yeah, pandemic. I've and it goes. <laughs> <laughs> and it and it goes, I swear, I did edibles every night for two years. <laughs> but you know what? It wasn't just weed. It was just things that were edible. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> On that, we might get to move. Up next, they're yelling, ships ahoy. But don't assume they're a girl or a boy. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.